all of this is really protection against risk. Vacation, maybe not so much protection against risk, but other than the sense that um, for the refresh and the recharge, the mental health, the social emotional health of having a vacation. But health insurance is definitely protects us against risk of getting sick, having some more serious illness or injury. Retirement is we save now or we invest now, we put money aside now, small amounts that grow over time so that we have money when we're not able to work anymore. Surveys continue to show that the top benefits employees want from employers are health insurance, paid time off, retirement benefits, vision, dental and life insurance, parental leave, and health savings accounts. Regardless of which benefits are offered, a Kansas State University Family Resource Management Specialist says that employees need to make the most of the benefits. On today's Sound Living, maximizing employee benefits. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman. K-State Research and Extension Family Resource Management Specialist Elizabeth Kish says the three primary employee benefits are vacation or paid time off, health insurance, and retirement. Elizabeth, one of the things that many people have to consider, especially those who have been newly hired, are employee benefits. And when it comes to employee benefits, really three areas to focus on, vacation, health, and retirement. And vacation is probably one of those that we really think about because we don't want to lose those days depending on what type of a system we would be under. Right. So those are the three sort of primary types of employee benefits, I think. And vacation and also sick days. And some employers put it all together as just days or hours, and you can use it for whatever you need. I think at this time of year, one of the things to do is review the policies and programs of your employer if you are an employee who actually has this benefit. So we need to recognize that not everyone would have these benefits. But if you do, you know, use them, first of all. And in order to be able to use them, you need to know what are the policies around leave. Do you have separate balances for vacation and sick days? And then how much do you have to take at a time? So, for example, can you take it an hour at a time or do you have to take it four hours at a time or a full day at a time? And then if you don't use all of your leave hours or benefit in a particular year, do you lose it or does it accrue? You know, that means does it add up over time? And if it does accrue, do you have a maximum total that you can get to? And then after that, you don't accrue anymore. So lots of things to think about when it comes to just the mechanics of the hours. But the other thing to think about, especially if you do have vacation or personal leave days, is using them. (laughs) (laughs) And uh, so we, you know, many people also have paid holidays. And so we know what those are. But then vacation days are given to us to refresh, recharge, maybe connect with family or friends or to pursue other hobbies or activities in a more focused way that maybe we don't have time to do during our regular day-to-day work and life schedules. So they're really important not to lose them. And many, many, many people don't take vacation. And yes, it's great to be a work warrior or whatever you want to call yourself. But really, and I think, you know, in the last few years, again, so much has changed. And we really do need that time away if it's given to us. So now in January, February, is a time to start thinking about, well, will you take days in the summer, as many people do, or will you take a few in the spring, summer, fall? You know, do you want to save them for over the winter holidays? Just start planning it and getting it in your calendar. Also, depending on your workplace, you may have to negotiate with your colleagues (laughs) and the ebb and flow of your workplace, too. If fall's a busy time, you might not be able to take vacation in the fall, even if that's what you'd really like to do. Yeah, I I think that's good, getting your vacation time in early, thinking about what may be coming up. Sometimes there's life events, weddings, things like that, that you want to make sure that you can attend. So the sooner you get that in, the better opportunity you have to get that time off. That's right. Um, Especially, you know, if you work in a small workplace or your department is small, or if you know you have some very 
non-flexible events that you really want to attend or participate in, as you mentioned, a wedding. And I know, depending on your life stage, you may have uh, many weddings to go to. (laughs) The other thing I think is of major importance as we think about it is health insurance. And I know just from Kansas State alone, there are a number of various plans that you could be a part of. And we review those every year to see whether or not we want to make any changes, whether we want to continue to have everything taken out, if we want to do a savings type account, a lot of options when it comes to health insurance. Sure. So for us, you mentioned K-State and the state of Kansas. And our open enrollment period is in the fall, but the new policies start now. So You may have reviewed everything and made your decisions, or maybe you were a little bit on autopilot and just said, well, I'm going to do what I have done before. But now that the policies are in force is a great time to review what your actual coverage is, even if you think you know. Think about what providers are in the network, and it could vary based on the service because providers come and go. I know I got a letter from Blue Cross Blue Shield of Kansas, who's my providers mentioning that somebody had left the network. And so I have to find someone new, right? And so I think now is a great time. Hopefully you rested over the holidays and you're healthy, but we also know there's a lot going around. So it's better to know who your providers are, know what the terms of your insurance contract is before you need to use it. For just the day-to-day, like the cold, sniffles, colds, you know, I call them the scratch and dent events. And then If you are thinking about this might be a year to do something bigger, maybe, you know, some kind of surgery or, you know, you find out during the year, then if you have the opportunity to think about the timing of it all, you know, speak with your provider, but then also look at things like your deductible and is it an individual deductible or a family deductible? And in the past, have you met the deductible? In which case you might want to save a big medical expense for, you know, a time of year when you think the deductible may have been met. So those are kind of appointments and maybe critical care things that you can schedule, but still important. Also think about what is it in terms of if there's an emergency, what does your health insurance policy say about what's covered and where do you have to go and and those kind of things. Then there's also, of course, the mental health benefits that you may have in your policy. And if that's something that's important to you or a family member who's covered, review that because that may have changed. And then also, if you take regular medications, you might want to review the prescription coverage and also what your policy says about where If there are any prescription benefits that you can take advantage of, that would lower the cost. We're always thinking about what we want to expose ourselves to risk-wise when it comes to insurance. So we need something that we're comfortable with. We know that we can at least meet the expenses up to a certain point. Right. So that's another thing to think about is depending on what your total out-of-pocket cost is for the year based on if you actually use your health insurance coverage, it's good to think about where will that money come from. And many of us do have health savings accounts that can be used to cover the co-payments and the out-of-pocket expenses before your deductible is met. Many people also have flexible spending accounts that is probably a little bit more targeted towards specific benefits. And so if you do, you want to spend out of that first and then use your health savings account. But you may, if you don't have access to those savings accounts, you may just need a general emergency fund account, right, for what other things that might not be covered that you might need. And so, yes, um, because we don't want to be in the position where we have health insurance, but we don't have the money to cover the copay or the deductible. And so that's where these other actual sort of cash savings accounts might come in. I guess we also need to consider our family and whether or not someone else is going to be on our policy or maybe someone else's policy. Right. And many of us probably, depending when your open enrollment is, an open enrollment for employer-provided coverage can vary throughout the year. But I'm guessing that at this time of year, most people have their coverage and they just need to review and remind themselves who's actually covered and what's included in that coverage. For people who are not covered on employer-provided plans, there is, of course, the health insurance marketplace, and that's at healthcare.gov. And there are a variety of plans and choices. And most people who explore that find that it's actually very affordable for an individual and a family. 
And this is going to give you the basic preventative medicine, right? The exams, the the visits to your right. doctor, things so like that. So we do have the preventative services that are covered, required to be covered by all insurance plans. And you definitely would get those if you choose a plan from the marketplace. You also get those from an employer-provided plan. It seems like we're waiting for retirement to talk about that. But really what, what we're thinking about here is the fact that If it's offered, you want to take advantage of that as much as you can, especially if there is an employer match. Right. So retirement is another really big benefit that in the United States is very much tied to employment. And if you are in a job that has an employer-provided retirement plan, most of the plans nowadays, the employee puts in some money, and as you say, the employer may match it up to a certain amount, or the employer may also make a contribution. And so if you have the type of plan available to you where the employer matches a certain percentage, if you are at all able to, you want to at least put in of your own money up to the percent that the employer will match. So if the employer matches 4% of your salary, then you want to put in 4%, so you get a total of 8%. If the employer will match up to 10%, then you want to put 10% of your salary in and you get 20%. And over time, well, there's two parts of this. It may seem like in a total amount, it may be small, but over time, it adds up. And with um, compounding and market, it, uh, hopefully there's market gains, but of course, there will also likely be losses. But over time, you then accrue a sum of money that you can use for retirement when you do retire. In the moment, 10% or 4% even can seem like a lot to take off the top of your salary, especially when you're just starting out. But if you just do it off the top, you may not miss it. And over time, you just get used to it. And it's so, well, it can be exciting. It can also be disappointing when you look at your balances. <laughs> um, <laughs> over the last few years, yes. <laughs> it's been a roller coaster, right? Um, but again, employer-provided retirement accounts are one benefit of being an employee. Of course, Social Security is also tied to employment for the most part. As workers, we pay into it and our employers also pay into it. We put less into Social Security, we also get less out. And it, you know, there's a lot of conversation always <laughs> about Social Security. And so One thing that's really important to keep in mind is that it's not meant to be our only source of retirement income. So we talk about the three-legged stool with retirement. It's Social Security is one leg, employer-related retirement accounts and balances is another leg, and then personal savings or perhaps even working longer could be the third leg. So all of those will likely be necessary to fund any one person's retirement. And I'm going to ask if you're someone who is self-employed, all of these things then fall on you to come up with, right? Uh, Obviously, you can vacation, I guess, whatever you want if you're self-employed, but health and retirement are something that you're going to have to take care of yourself. That's right. If you are self-employed, you do need to think about that. And there are accounts that you can buy into that you know, and for those people who are self-employed, it could really be helpful to at least have a conversation with a financial planner or your business person who helps you, you know, to, to talk to a professional to make sure that you have the coverages that you need so that you're not out there at risk. Um, because as you mentioned early on, all of this is really protection against risk. Vacation, maybe not so much protection against risk, but other than the sense that um, for the refresh and the recharge, the mental health, the social-emotional health of having a vacation. But health insurance is definitely protects us against risk of getting sick, having some more serious illness or injury. Retirement is we save now or we invest now, we put money aside now, small amounts that grow over time so that we have money when we're not able to work anymore. That's K-State Research and Extension Family Resource Management Specialist Elizabeth Kish with information on maximizing employee benefits. Sound Living is a weekly public affairs program produced by Research and Extension at Kansas State University. I'm Jeff Wickman, and this is the K-State Radio Network.